Welcome to another bite-sized VO radio show. I'm Andrew Peters. And I'm Robbo. Now, last week we mentioned we were talking about difference between gain and level. Now, yep. some, some preamps don't actually have gain and level because I know my the Neve preamp I've got here has gain and trim. Right. So I'm, I don't even know what how that actually works, which is pretty appalling, but I don't. Um, <laughs> and the one I'm using now is uh, the LA610, which has gain yep. and it has level. It also has EQ and it has a compressor, which has a peak limiter and um, an output level. But let's not worry about that bit yet. Let's just talk about the preamp. What is the yep. difference between gain and level? Okay. Uh, I've, I'm not going to make this too technical. I'm going to keep it simple for everyone to understand. Think of gain as the input volume to whatever you're putting audio into, whether that be a compressor, a peak limiter, or a mixer, or whatever. Gain is your input volume. So, for example, if you were getting ready to, or setting up a session and you were listening to yourself on the microphone from your mixer, so you've got your microphone going into a mic pre on the mixer and you've got your headphones plugged into the mixer and it's, say it sounds distorted and you look at the output, you look at the meters on your fader and they're all nicely in the green and not going into the red, what's happening is you're feeding too much signal from your microphone into that piece of equipment and it's distorting. So you don't want to play with the fader. You want to reach for the gain control for the channel that your microphone's plugged into, wind it back. So we're winding the vol input from the microphone back until we find that nice sweet spot where we've got plenty of presence, nice good level, but it's not distorting. The other way that might, we might see it is if we were going into our mixer and we were looking at the meters and it's sounding distorted and the meters are all pushed up in the red and all over the place, that's the time that we want to pull our volume back. Now, sometimes it may be a mix of the two. Sometimes you may need to wind your gain back to find that sweet spot and then push your volume up to get a decent level out. Yeah. It just depends on what you're doing. So if you're, if you're yelling and screaming for some sound effects for a, a, a video game, then obviously you're going to want to have your gain wound down nicely and enough volume from our fader or our output of the equipment that we're getting a nice level to record. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. So in the old days where we used to use tone to set levels, yep. was that setting your gain or was that setting your level? Well, so that's setting your level pretty much. So um, yeah, that's that's setting a level. That's sort of, so these days, I mean, well, always white noise is the best one to use if you want to set a level because it's all frequencies mixed together. Yeah. Um, tone is like, you know, a, a certain frequency just put out in a constant tone. Yeah. Um, so like playing one note on a keyboard, whereas white noise is all the notes on a keyboard played at once. Yeah. If that analogy makes sense, but yeah. across the frequency spectrum. So, um, so yeah, look, uh, I guess the best way to sort of think about it is, 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 as I said, is to think about gain being the input volume to whatever piece of equipment you're going into. Yep. And then the, the volume or the fader or whatever being the output of that piece of equipment. And you want those two nicely balanced. So uh, effectively, if I'm sitting, setting up a voiceover, my fader on my mixer will stay at zero and I will adjust the gain from the microphone or whatever the, the, it is that I'm, I'm recording from. And so my fader will always sit at zero and I'll find that nice sweet spot where there's enough gain that the voice sounds nice and in my face and is filling the, and is filling the speakers, but it's not distorting. And then if I have to make a minor adjustment with volume because it's coming through the piece of equipment at louder level than I want, then I'll pull it back. Yeah. Because you can't adjust gain after you record. You can adjust volume after you record. Does that make sense? It does make sense, yeah. Yeah, so it's a touchy thing. And just to throw a curveball in there. <laughs> Good one. Sometimes it's helpful to use a little more gain than you need. So sometimes that tiny bit of dis distortion, and we're talking about tube stuff here, tube compressors and all that sort of stuff, a tiny bit of compression can actually add a nice little tone to what you're doing as well. But I would leave that one for the pros. I certainly wouldn't be sitting in a home studio as a voiceover artist going, mm, I wonder how much distortion I can wind in here. <laughs> yes, not a good idea, no. So, yeah. Now I've got mine, which I'm using right now, in fact. I have the gain knob sitting on plus 5 dB. 
Mm. And then I think I've got my level output around about six and a half, I think it is. Yep. Ideally, I probably should have the gain set on zero or even minus, really, and use the level output to get the right mm. levels out. Yeah, well... As, as we just said, that could be the case if you wanted to sort of have a set and forget. Yeah. Whereas, you know, as I said in the studio, I, I would be looking to, when I was setting up your voice, if you say you came in here to Voodoo Sound and I was going to record you, I'd set you up on the microphone and I would adjust the gain so that it's not distorting, but your voice is filling the speakers and sort of sounding like you're sitting right in the room next to me. Yeah, yeah. Because if the lower the gain, there's sort of less presence in the voice, I guess is probably the best way to describe it. Okay. So I don't want you distorting, but I want you nice and loud and present and popping and, and filling up my speakers. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and, and that's where, you know, when you say, uh, you, you hear um, producers or, or, or audio engineers going, mate, you know, mouth click, blah de blah de blah Mouth click is because we've got the gain up, the microphone is listening so closely, so intently to your mouth that those little clicks become more obvious than they would be in a normal conversation. That's interesting and that could be a topic for another one because I've seen so many people talking about mouth clicks and, and mouth mm, noise. Mm, it, mm. it seems to fill up just about every forum I look at. Yeah, absolutely. I know of a studio in Sydney that keeps a loaf of bread in the voice booth. Ah, well, should we talk yeah. about that next week? Maybe we should. Beautiful. Matt, um, I hope we've covered off gain and volume. If anyone has any questions, make sure you uh, jump on the Facebook page or the website and shoot them off and I'll answer them for you best I, as best I can. Cool. Sounds like a plan. And well, we love a plan. All right. Excellent. We do love a plan. <laughs> yes, we I'm do. we go and have a sandwich now we're talking about bread. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. See you next week. Chat next week. Yeah. Cheers. The VO Radio Show is produced in the studios of Voodoo Sound. To polish your next audio production, check us out at voodoo-sound.com. Find professional voices simply all in one place. Realtimecasting.com, including me.